Elizabeth. You heard about Kelly? How's Helman? Have you heard? I'm just waiting to see him. I feel responsible for Kelly's... What happened to her? John, you didn't shoot her. Bob Peters did. I lost the case. If I hadn't... Is he in custody yet, Peters? Suicide watch at County. Excuse me. Doug Hellman's awake. One at a time, please. You go. Peters was angry about the verdict. Understandably, so was I. I don't see how my trial strategy is relevant. Well, just the same. I asked Maureen and Annabeth to review the case files. Did you find anything useful? Who was Nick Baxter? He's on your amended witness list, but you never called him. He didn't pan out. Did you question him? His deposition isn't in your files either. I didn't depose him. My investigator interviewed him. No record of that either. Is there something behind this witness we should know about, John? No. There's nothing. Baxter was a bartender. He served Hopkins some drinks one night and allegedly heard him rambling on about killing his wife. So we did a little digging and determined he wasn't credible. Why not? His story didn't really add up, for one thing. He perjured himself in a child custody case. Hellman would have ripped him apart. Did you mention Baxter to the Peters? Not specifically, no. Say what you're trying to say, Annabeth. You assured them David Hopkins would be convicted, right? I told them we had a very strong case, and I had no reason to believe we wouldn't get a conviction. You never mentioned Baxter to them, the last-minute witness that would seal the deal? No, I did not. Well, Turley's going to claim that you unrealistically built up the Peters' hopes and made David Hopkins' acquittal even more devastating than it had to be. There's a lot of things I wish I had done differently. But for you to suggest that I didn't do everything I could to win that case is just plain wrong. I'm not suggesting that, John. I should have won it, but I didn't. Why didn't you? What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. Doug Hellman did a better job telling his story to the jury than I did mine. That's what it boils down to, doesn't it? Who's got the better story? And if Bob Peters wants to put his killing Kelly on me because of that, well, I can't believe we're having this conversation. Anything else I can help you with? You let me know. John, this isn't personal. Yes, Annabeth, it is. It couldn't be more personal. Vance didn't find Baxter. You did. Tell me how. Why do you care so much about Baxter? He's a witness I never called in a case that's over against a defendant that can't be retried. Just tell me how you found Baxter. I loved her. Kelly. We all did. No, that's not what... Kelly and I were... We were seeing each other. She never told me that. Nobody knew. We started dating during the trial. Why didn't you recuse yourselves? By the time we realized where things were going, it would have led to a mistrial. Neither of us wanted that. We had a rule. We never discussed the case, or, or even work for that matter. We figured we could keep it a secret from Hellman, but... It turned out he knew. Did Kelly tell you about Baxter? Kelly would have never done that. She was incredibly ethical. We never discussed the Hopkins case, ever. Then how did you find out? <sighs> One night, she was staying in my apartment. She left her briefcase open with the file on Baxter right on top. Like she wanted me to see it. Even so, John, why did you look at it? Why would you jeopardize your case? The Peters were calling me every day coming into the office, waiting for me after court, desperate for good news. And to be honest, the trial had started to turn. I could feel the jury having doubts about my case. It was so stupid, but once I knew that Hopkins had confessed to Baxter about killing his wife, I had to put him on the stand. But you didn't. 
No. Hellman? Saw Baxter on my witness list and confronted me. He said he knew Kelly and I were involved and accused me of betraying Kelly to discover Baxter. Well, let me guess, Hellman came up with a solution. What were we gonna do? Either I could drop it and pretend like I never found Baxter or Hellman would expose us to the judge. Either way, Baxter would never testify. John, if Hellman wasn't willing to go to the judge, you should have. Yeah. I should have. I know that now. But I didn't. I didn't coach her, if that's what you're suggesting. Then why'd she change her statement? She was in shock when she identified her son. I'm convinced I have a guilty party. I'll put Mrs. Murphy on the stand, and she'll nullify her declaration. I'm not dropping the charge. Annabeth, the mother just said her son didn't do it. You need to take that seriously and consider who did. And I suppose you have an alternate suspect? Phil Deshaies, Mrs. Murphy's brother-in-law. The police already talked to him. He has an alibi. He could have hired it done. For what reason? And the random fingerprint inside the Murphy house supports that theory. No, it doesn't. Deshaies has no motive. <laughs> Eric Murphy is innocent, and you're refusing to look at other suspects. The cops have the right guy. You know what, Annabeth? I'm not a prosecutor anymore. I don't have to solve the murder. I just need to mention the fingerprint, dangle the name Deshaies in front of an Indianapolis jury. That and the mom's recantation? Reasonable doubt times two. What causes a person to become alert and oriented times two or times one? A lack of oxygen to the brain. Brain cells become ischemic. They start to die. How is oxygen carried to the brain? Via the blood. So when a person loses substantial amounts of blood, they're losing oxygen to the brain as well? Correct, sir. How much blood had Mrs. Murphy lost when you arrived on scene? Two liters, approximately. How much blood is in the average woman's body? Four and a half liters. So Mrs. Murphy had lost nearly half of her blood? Half of the precious liquid which carries oxygen to her brain, and, and yet she was still, how do you say it? A and O times three? When we arrived, yes, sir. And by the time you got to the hospital? She lost consciousness. Alert and oriented times three Minus two liters of blood. Seems like a miracle. Actually, it seems medically impossible. It's not. But then, you're not a doctor. You're a paramedic. Yes, sir. No further questions. 